Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, over here I do dance 3D videos to help you to get the most out of your own renders. D-Force. No, we're not talking about a new superhero gang that's ready to save the world, but instead the tool within DAS that allows us to simulate the fall and the flow of various materials uh, within our scene so that things like cloth and hair, uh, for example, can fall naturally and accurately to improve the realism of our creations. Now, I've made a few videos uh, using DeForce on the channel, uh, but using DeForce with clothing on the channel. You'll be able to find a link up in the top right there to... Uh, just a playlist of other videos that I've done on DeForce. But the one thing that keeps cropping up when I talk to people in regards to DeForce is with DeForce hair. Uh, and so in this video, we're going to have a quick look at that and see how it differs, if it does, from using DeForce on normal everyday clothing. Firstly, though, before we get to that, I just want to give a big shout out at this moment to give a big, big thanks to everybody who's become a member of this channel over the last couple of months or so since I introduced memberships. Uh, I don't really have the words to express my thanks to you all, but you are really, really helping out the channel by being a member. Uh, so a big, big thanks. If you haven't already, it would be great if you could consider doing so. Just hit the join button down below uh, this video for all the details that you might need. Also, while I'm at it, and a big thanks also for those who've dropped a, a few super thanks my way as well over the last couple of months. Uh, that's just a way, if you see a video that you like and you think, hey, that's really helped me out, that. Just your way of throwing a few little rocks my way just to say thanks to me. And uh, I really, really appreciate those people who've already done that. And finally subscribers i think we're around about four and a half thousand now at this point without you lot there wouldn't be a channel so big big thank you to everybody also as well uh you've also probably no doubt heard other subs uh, youtubers say this the vast majority of people who watch videos don't subscribe to the channel that they are watching the videos on so if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button and the little notification button down below. And if nothing else, it just tells me that there's people out there who want to watch videos like this and the others that I do. But a big thanks if you already have, and a big thanks if you just click on this button right now as I'm saying that. Right, DeForce hair. So here we are then, we have our model uh, set up in this little temporary studio that I've got, all ready for the action that we've got planned for her. Uh, however, for a video that's uh, about DeForce hair, she's got one thing missing, of course. She's got no hair on her head. Now, there are two types of DeForce hair that are in existence. There's the strand-based hair, which is probably the most predominant one that you'll come across, and uses Daz's own little strand-based hair tool that's, that's uh, within Daz. The other type of hair is just normal everyday hair that, you got, that you've got, which just been, you know, adapted so that it works well with... Uh, you know, deforce. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to use the strand base hair because it's more likely the hair that you're going to come across. Uh, so what we've got, I've got over here in my tutorial folder. Uh, what I need to do is I need to select our model, first of all, and then just come down to the deforce hair that I'm going to use, which is this deforce Romeo hair here. Incidentally, there's the links for all the assets in this uh, video are down below uh, in the description. That's for the model and the clothing and, of course, the hair if you want to follow along step by step exactly what I do. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to double click the hair and apply it to the model. And there is the hair now loaded onto the model itself. If I just come across to a camera that I have set up just so we can oops, take a look at her from in front. Uh, you might look at this and you think, hold on a second. This hair, the way that it's all shaped, it doesn't look anything like it does on this little icon up here. What, what's going on? Well, with DeForce hair, the creators set up the, the, the hair and position it and style it in such a way that they want it to land and to fall after the DeForce simulation has been placed upon it. Uh, that doesn't look, obviously, like it does up there. And if we just go across and have a quick look at iRay Preview, and it looks like her hair is all over the place, almost as if she just got out of bed. But of course, what really needs to happen is that the hair itself needs to be simulated. And that is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to come across to the simulation settings page. It's there. Uh, I'm going to turn off start bones from memorized pose. Uh, I don't want to do that. And we're going to make sure that it's on frames to simulate. It's just the current frame. That's all we're going to do it on. Once we're happy with that, we come up to the simulate button and we press simulate.
Now, as usual, uh, depending on what it is that you, the complexity of what it is that you're simulating, that will determine how long it takes. This was fairly quick, uh, just doing a single frame on that. But as you can see, the, the hair is simulating its drop down, uh, probably in a way that, you know, it was wanted and designed by the creator. So if we have a look at that uh, as a render, you can see that the hair has dropped as such, and it, it looks okay. It's straight off. Straight out of the bag, just hit simulate on current frame and it does a decent job of simulating the hair. Uh, if we're now back in DAS and we take a look into this perspective view and we have a spin around, we can see that everything has just fallen down okay and everything looks fine. Apologies here if the viewport is lagging a little bit, but hey, it's DAS. What do you expect? Uh, so yeah, everything looks fine there. Everything looks good. Uh, the vast majority of cases that you'll ever use DeForce uh, hair with, that will be it. You won't have to do anything else in the vast majority of cases. But what we're going to have a look at at the moment is what if you want certain things? What if you want to do certain things and you have to use a few little tricks to get exactly what it is that you want? Well, let's take a look and see what we can do. If we now come back up to the simulation settings for a moment, uh, give it a right click and do clear simulated data, it will remove all the effects of the simulation that we've just done. Uh, so what we've done, we, we've taken the base default setup of the hair, we've run a simulation and we've ended up with the result that we got. Now most of these deforce hair that we get have other little settings with them and if I just expand my window a little bit, if I can just do this so we can see everything uh, we've got down here a little folder called initial hair shapes it's called uh, without taking up and obscuring half of my screen we can't see it but initial hair shapes and a lot of deforce hair comes with these things included uh, this one up here is the default pose which is the hair that you see on our models head up here but all of these different ones are different initial setups of the hair that the creator has created that will allow us to get a different effect after simulation has been run uh, all different things again it's just the initial setup but they give no real clue or indication of how the hair will look uh, come the end of the simulation uh, for instance if we were to come to this one here Romeo hair pose making sure we've got the hair selected up in our environment and give it a click it will put in board it will put in place this initial setup pose that the creator has created and if we were to come up and simulate this one and if we were to do a side by side comparison with the newly simulated hair on the right here with the original default that we did you can see the difference you can see how it's fallen and simulated differently uh, between the two so don't be afraid to have a play around with these initial setup poses that you've got available to you with you know now on every single piece of the every little product of, of deforce hair that you'll get that may help you and get the look and the final look that you want uh, however what we've got here isn't something that i'm quite 100 happy with i'm okay with it but what i would really want to do and incidentally i'm in the initial default pause here and i've simmed it back down like we had earlier on in the video what i would want to do is i'd want to take all of this area that's over to you know the back of a neck and the back of a head and what i would like to do is just bring it in a little bit so it's a little bit tighter and a little bit more compact hanging down straight behind the shoulders and behind the back uh, none of these initial pose setups here will allow me to do it so i need to use other tools to do that and one of the tools that you have available to you like with normal deforce is if we come across to the, the simulation settings we can come to the environment tab and we can play around with gravity and with air resistance obviously gravity determines just how much pull and how much force there is pulling the hair down towards the ground and air resistance is the opposite of that it's how much resistance there is to any fallen object or any object that's fallen uh, as a default we set up one which is one earth's gravity on on gravity but we could go all the way up to two however i'm got an inkling that that's not going to be strong enough so if we come across this little cog give it a click come to parameter settings and do use turn off use limits and click accept i'm going to actually put it up to five the gravity of five that's five times earth gravity 
Uh, what I'm going to do with air resistance is I'm going to knock it down to zero so there's no resistance at all uh, against the air as it falls. Again, what we'll do, we'll simulate it and see what happens. Right click simulation settings, clear all the data out, even though you don't need to do that technically, and then it's simulate. Now again, if we compare side by side the original default on the left and then the, the Gravity 5 simulation on the right, we can see it is a little bit tighter. It's tighter on the top and it has pulled the sides in a little bit. But one thing that it's done is that it's pulled the, the, the hair in front of the shoulders somewhat. Uh, and the reason for that is because the pull has been so strong that the hair's got caught up on the shoulders and it's not uh, fell exactly as I wanted, which would be behind the model's head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce another little thing we can do, and if you've looked at some of the other DeForce uh, videos in the past, what we're going to do is we're going to move across to the animation timeline and we're going to do a little trick just to make sure that that hair goes behind the shoulders. So here we are then back in Daz with the simulation reset. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the timeline and we're going to use a little bit of an animation uh, to try and get this hair falling behind the shoulders of our model. Uh, one thing I have done, by the way, I've changed the gravity down from five to three because I've done a little bit of experiment and three tends to work best with what it is I'm trying to do here. Now, even though I mentioned animation and I mentioned the timeline, don't worry about it if you've never used that before. Uh, you don't need to be a you know somebody who works at Pixar or anything like that for what we're about to do. Uh, so what we are going to do though is we're going to open the timeline down here. Uh, we've got the timeline and we can see over here that we're set up at frame 30. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way down to frame zero down here. And I'm going to do that by just clicking these two little buttons right there, all the two little arrows right there. So it takes it all the way down to frame zero. Now if I come out to the perspective camera so we can see what's going on here, our model then is now stood in an A pose down at frame zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to come across to the Genesis 8 model, give her a click, and I'm going to rotate her so she's leaning backwards on frame zero. And I'm going to rotate her at a 35 degree angle. The idea being that at this angle, the gravity, the force of the gravity pulling the hair should pull it clear of the shoulders so that in the final pose, when we get back to, up to pose 30, uh, the hair will be, be behind the shoulders and will be somewhere in the region of what I actually want it to be. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come across back over to the simulation tab and click simulate. And I'm going to turn frames to simulate over to animated timeline play range and we're going to run the simulation through these 30 frames we using deforce and hopefully we get the results at the end that we're looking for so i'll run this now this is going to take about 15 minutes i'll run this now i'll speed it up for you and then we'll have a look see what we've got once everything is done and the simulation is finished i'll see you in a bit So once more, now the simulation is complete, we can do a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the original render that we did earlier. Uh, now we can easily see that the air, again, is a lot tighter around the head and it falls behind the shoulders in the way that I wanted to do. And I've achieved this by using a combination of stronger gravity, reducing the air resistance down to zero, and then just animating her over, over the timeline from a position where she was leaning backwards. Uh, now, by using these methods and a combination of them, you should be able to have the air falling roughly the way that you want it, no matter what image that you're doing. Uh, I say roughly, you're not going to get exact because you can't predict how every little strand of hair is going to collide with each other. But you should be able to get somewhat close to the things that you want to do. Uh, the only downsides being that it can take a little time to get there. Uh, simulating over the timeline is always going to be time consuming and if you're having to experiment with different settings and ways of doing things then you might end up having to run the, a number of simulations before you're happy with the results and unfortunately that just takes time uh, so that's a basic rundown then of deforce air I hope, now we hope this video has actually dismystified little things somewhat for those who've been struggling with it uh, and it's given you a few ideas of your own 
to do your own scenes. Uh, if so, then give the video a like. And as always, if you have any comments, then drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So that's it for now. Deforce here. Bye bye. And I'll see you next time.